I feel like some people unintentionally inspire and empower others to mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. after it, like, like just like this, mm -hmm. but in a way that's misleading because mm -hmm. all that you saw was, oh, they did this and then mm -hmm. success. And then success. Mm -hmm. And they missed all the in-between. And so then when you did make that decision, mm -hmm. you don't know what to do when mm -hmm. those moments, those pitfalls start to happen. Mm -hmm. And then you also don't see anyone else sharing it. And so then you feel like you're, you're internalized a lot of that. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. So, Michelle, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me thank tonight. Thank you for having me. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, as you guys know, I like to start off every episode um, just telling you how I met the beautiful young lady that I am <laughs> speaking with. And we're also drinking tea, too, yes. as tea well. Time. For those of you who are watching us, we are <laughs> drinking tea as well. And um, so, Michelle and I, um, we met through Nena Umelo. If you guys follow me for any length of time, you, you already know who Nena is. <laughs> you know that I am her number one biggest fan. Absolutely love Nena. And Nena thought it would be good for us to meet and to have Michelle here, here on the show. And so I reached out to Michelle and we met up at Moxie's and we had an amazing conversation. Like I just told her before we started <laughs> that we probably could have recorded that conversation and put it up here. <laughs> like that's probably what we could have did because we sat there for like what an hour. It was longer than we thought. It was, it was way we were longer. Just talking and talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh yeah, it should be perfect for the show because that's what it's all about. <laughs> You know, sisters come together and just have an amazing, transparent, authentic conversations. And so, yeah, but we've kept in contact. I've been to a few of her, a few of her events, and um, she's you're so amazing. Michelle has connected me with so many other people over this short time frame. Because when did we meet up in Moxie? Just like it's a couple a of months. months. Yeah, just a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah, just a few months ago. And I'm still going through all the people that she has, <laughs> you know, given me to connect me with. Um, it's just been amazing. So that's my long winded introduction of how we met. Tell us more about you and what it is that you do. Yeah, so I, I'm i from Houston, although I've been here since I was a little girl. I'm originally from Mexico, but I'm not really allowed to tell people I'm from Mexico anymore if I've been here since I was like two, three years old. But I still do it. Uh, and I grew up in the south side of Houston, went to U of H, I'm a first gen college graduate, went into the energy industry for about five years working as an analyst in the LNG industry. But I always had this like passion for giving back to the community and I think partially was because mm -hmm. while I was going through college, I, I personally, I didn't really have mentorship, I didn't have any guidance of somebody telling me like what do I do next or what do I do in this situation. Mm -hmm. And so as I got involved with different student organizations, mm -hmm. I kind of learned to to give back in terms of knowledge, pass mm -hmm. along what mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. who you know, with that person that really needs it, and to just kind of help them to that next step. And so while I was, um, when I was pursuing my career, mm -hmm. and I just felt like I had to continue that work I started in college of giving back. And so I was constantly spending countless hours at U of H um, and at different other campuses giving back, volunteering with students, doing as many professional workshops as I could think of to pass, an al pass along like that information I already had. And I also volunteered on different nonprofit boards and did a lot of volunteer work for different organizations. And this was on top of my, my full-time job that is funny because we're saying nine to five, but it really was more like a 
eight to eight, eight yeah. to nine. It really yeah. depended on the day. Oh, absolutely. And so definitely it wasn't necessarily a 40 hour week kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so on top of that, though, I always like made it a priority. I just I couldn't wait to get home to start working on projects that I had going on that were either my my own or projects I had going on with my husband or other friends. And last year, I finally decided that after some time, both my nonprofit and community work was moving upward, and so was my career. And I felt like I finally started feeling that toll mm -hmm. of saying you cannot do both. You can't do, I, I mean, I think I was doing at least like 50 hours a week for each. Mm. So about 100 hours a week of work. Wow. And you're married. So <laughs> you've taken up all your time yeah. working in, on your side, on your yeah. side project. And a lot of, it's funny because he said that, a lot of that, our time between my husband mm -hmm. and I, at the time he was my boyfriend and we were engaged. We've been blessed enough that we we like the same things yeah. in terms of it's, yeah. it's both of our priorities to give back. And we did a lot of that together. And so a lot of our dates were actually working on a project. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so it was somewhat natural for me when I did the transition um, mm -hmm. because I had already been preparing for it for quite some time. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't as smooth sailing as I thought it would be. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely go into more of that rocky road. I definitely want to <laughs> go into that and talk about that. But I like the fact that you said that there was a pull and a tug at you while you was working your corporate your yeah. corporate job, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this particular thing, you know, having a conversation on how we can use self-awareness to decide whether or not quitting our nine to five is something that we should do or if that's really what we want to do. And the reason why I say if that's something that we really want to do is because right now entrepreneurship, that's the thing to do. That's the, the that's the new it thing. Uh, being an entrepreneur, you know, that's what's cool, you know, <laughs> these days. Um, so some of us, we want to jump into it because of pressure because it's glamorized a little bit across social media. Yeah. And then there are, there are a lot of business owners who literally quit their nine to five and now they have successful companies. Yay. And so, you know, people see this and they think they can do it too. Not to say that you cannot, yeah. but let's have a conversation to see if that's really what you want to do. Yeah. And then there are people out there too who know they have a business deep down this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they've been, you know, working on something or not working on something, or it's just been this idea in the back of their mind for years and they're not happy at their nine to five and they're not doing anything about it because they feel trapped. So that's another reason why, why I wanted to have this conversation with you guys. And I don't know if you know, just in case you've been living under a rock, because I know I have, but you know, 2020 is expected to have a recession. So what is, you know, what's the fallback? What's the backup plan? You know, the number one thing most people do when there's a recession is they go back to school. Now you guys know that I'm all about education, okay? Because I got a couple of degrees up under my belt. I'm all about <laughs> education. But that's probably is not the route that you need to take. You may need to, you know, Take a risk and start that business, but let's um, let's talk about it. You know, let's let's talk about it. Let's see if that's what uh, you should do, and at least get you on a path where you're thinking critically about the decision and not just haphazardly jumping into it. Um, because there are so many people out there who have literally quit their job and now they have blown up. But the part you don't know is that they've been working behind the scenes along their corporate job. And at some point, maybe the boss pissed them off, an employee to piss them off, and they just like, you know what? I quit. That has Bad been the bye. case. Yeah. <laughs> that has been the case in some situations. So I like the fact that you brought up that you were working, you know, 50 hours on your That's project. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of people have a side hustle. Yeah. And and if anything, like people have had side hustles since forever, but it was never coined a term and people mm -hmm. didn't think it was this cool thing. It's just right. you were just working. Yeah. And I think that what you said is so true. I, the whole experience of it mm -hmm. is somewhat glamorized. And what people fail, what you fail to see even on people's social medias or even when you actually talk to people about their journey is all that, that downside of it. And so 
it's super important to be transparent about that. Yeah. Because yeah. I feel like some people unintentionally inspire and empower others to mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. after it, like, like just like this, mm -hmm. but in a way that's misleading because mm -hmm. all that you saw was, oh, they did this and then mm -hmm. success. And then success. Mm -hmm. And they missed all the in-between. And so then when you did make that decision, mm -hmm. you don't know what to do when mm -hmm. those moments, those pitfalls start to happen. Mm -hmm. And then you also don't see anyone else sharing it. And so then you feel like you're, you're internalized a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You don't reach out for help or mentorship. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to take on that type of pressure. Mm -hmm. And then it impacts you internally. It mm -hmm. impacts your mental health. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, it's, it's scary. It's scary when you don't have someone to talk through all those pieces with. And mm -hmm. in my situation, I, as I mentioned, like I had been doing this forever and mm -hmm. it was something that I loved. And now I, <laughs> I actually never, I always said, tell people, I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. Really? Ever. I'm just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I need to go to college first mm -hmm. of all because mm -hmm. you know none of my family went to college. Mm -hmm. I need to be the one that goes and makes does that first, oh, and yeah. then gets that cor corporate job. Like oh, I, yeah. like, I want to work in a building in an office, and I want to use all my talents to kind of help somebody else that already kind of started it mm -hmm. for me. And I'm just going to mm -hmm. go and help make it better yeah. for them. Yeah, I never wanted to go out on my own, and I think it was just it was just it was in here mm -hmm. without me realizing it. But like I said, I was doing both for many years, for about five years, doing both. And mm -hmm. finally, I think the last the last two years really is when it started weighing on me. And I didn't love my jobs, but mm -hmm. I loved the prestige that came with my jobs because I felt that they they gave me validation. Ooh, that B word. I when I introduce myself to people and I'm like, oh, oh, my name is Michelle. Like, I even changed my tone of voice, you know, I was like, oh, oh I'm Michelle, like, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an analyst, a corporation, a yeah. global company, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. I felt like it truly gave me validation. Mm -hmm. And because of all, like, my, my background, my upbringing, my life struggles, my personal struggles, mm -hmm. I felt like mm -hmm. I, that, me having that position mm -hmm. in corporate America helped me, some would say, I made it. And so it was actually really hard for me to make a decision to say I was going to let go of that. Um, but the last like 12 months before making this decision last year, it just was weighing harder and harder. And I felt like everything was pointing me at that point mm. to making that decision. Wow. Wow. How did, um, how does self-awareness play a part in that? You know, before you answer that question, I want to piggyback off of what you said as well, is that, you know, a lot of people don't share the struggles as it relates to starting a business. So when somebody else sees them, they see how easy it is because they see the end result and then they just jump into it, right? Because nobody is sharing um, the struggles. Yeah. When you said that, two people popped up in my mind. Kevin Hart and James Dyson. These two people pop, popped up in my head because number one, Kevin Hart, if you don't know who he is, Google him, but he's on top of the world right now. I mean, because if you just started knowing Kevin Hart in the last past couple of years, you would have thought that he's an overnight success. But if you follow him for any length, um, length of time, you would hear him say that his success is like 20 plus years in the making. Yeah. Because his book, he has a great book on Audible. You have to definitely check it out. Whatever you do, don't listen to it while you're on the treadmill because he's funny <laughs> as heck. And I almost, <laughs> I almost did a couple times. <laughs> Listen, while I'm running on the treadmill listening to his book. No, but in his book, he talked about how he literally went to the malls, him and his friends, when he would go into the city to do a comedy show, him and his friends will go to the mall and literally pass out flyers for people to come to his comedy show and have discounted a discount on the entry fee. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, I mean, grassroots guerrilla marketing, like that's where he started. So Kevin Hart was the first person that popped up in my mind. And then also James Knight Dyson. And the reason why he popped up, because everybody has heard of the Dyson back in Cleveland, right? If you don't have a Dyson, you know somebody with a Dyson. Like that is a household name, right? James Dyson, he went through over 5,000 failed prototypes before perfecting the Dyson vacuum cleaner. Over 5,000. It was like 5,120 something wow. prototypes. Do you know <laughs> how crazy he looked to people? <laughs> you know, I don't know if he's married with children, but if he is married, can you imagine what his wife thought after the 50th failed <laughs> prototype? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> you know, but these are not the things that people are necessarily talking about. So this is what this is what you need to take into consideration because it's not hard. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just trying to show you the other side if this is what it is that you're thinking about. And also, too, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Just like you said that, you know, you love the fact of going in and, and helping out another business. You guys, we need y'all. As employees, if we're all business owners, who wanna help me? <laughs> who gonna help me with the logistics of this podcast? I was, just, <laughs> I was just talking to Jose, Michelle's husband, who's over here. I was just telling him how it felt so good to to come and be set up and just be chilling right before the podcast because it seemed like I was always rushing and trying to get things set up, you know, that's because I'm a one woman show. So if entrepreneurship is not your thing, it is okay. It is okay. You know, the earlier you said there was a tug pulling at you. I, I want to go back to that point as well, because if you're working your nine to five and you're not feeling fulfilled, it is something else that you want to do. Maybe doing it on the side works. Yeah. Maybe that will work for you. Entrepreneurship, Everybody doesn't have to start a business, even if it's you just volunteering, you know, a couple of times throughout the week or on the weekend, whatever, you know, that helps you to have that more meaningful, you know, experience and feeling and, and, and the, the purpose that's the calling that's on you. What can you do to fulfill that? That's not necessarily starting a business because I know a lot of people feel that way too. Like, do, yeah. I, do I have to make my side hustle business? No, you no. don't. So what? What was it? So what made it different for you? Because you said you didn't want to be an entrepreneur. So yeah. what? So what was the deciding factor for you to say, you know what, I'm gonna make this a business? Because you could have kept, you know, yeah. working it alongside your nine to five. So that's such a great question because I. Although all those years that I was doing that balancing act, mm -hmm. I think that because it was at the beginning of my career mm -hmm. that I felt like I had a little bit more of that leeway where I can yeah. say, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I worked this many hours today, but maybe it wasn't as bad and I still mm -hmm. have all this energy afterwards. Mm -hmm. But then like later in my career, I I don't know, I, I started thinking about how much time I had mm -hmm. like in a day and... I started thinking about how I wish I could get home to start on what I had to wait 10 hours to start on. Wow. And I started thinking about how much, like where could those projects be mm -hmm. if I was working on them right now? Mm -hmm. If I didn't have to wait 10 hours after, after my body was already kind of drained, my mind was already mm -hmm. drained, mm -hmm. I probably wanted to get home and maybe just chill and watch a movie with my husband, you know, like, mm -hmm. but instead we had to sit down and know we got to, we have to do this. Like yeah. this is needed. Like, yeah. And, and then I also went through a moment um, a few years ago mm -hmm. where y'all, I'm, I might, don't judge me, please. But I went through a moment where I didn't really understand when friends and people I knew talked about, having some of those like mental health awareness or issues. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand mm -hmm. a lot of things when people talked about like anxiety. Yeah. I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I didn't get it was because mm -hmm. I thought about me yeah. and how I was yeah. handling things. And I, and I, I kept thinking like, if I can do all these things, I don't understand 
right? Why I don't, I don't, what are you anxious about? I don't get it. I don't get it. I like, that's, that's always what I was thinking. Well, then it started happening to me <laughs> and it started happening to me and I didn't know what the hell was happening to me. <laughs> and so it was a, a time where I was, I would literally at work go to the women's bathroom, lock myself in a stall and I would be having a freak out moment wow. for no reason. Like wow. I could not understand like what was going on. Wow. And I would be there and I would just be like, like trying to relax my breathing, relax my breathing. I would sometimes cry in the bathroom and I had no idea what was going on. And it would be so random. I would, I would be working my, you know, I'd be on Excel, do my thing. I love Excel. Like I loved, I loved the work, the challenge of my job. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'll have to run to the bathroom to cry and stop. And I had no idea what the heck was happening to me. And that went on for about a year. Mm, that's went a long on, time. It went on for about a year on and off. And there was a period where it kind of started to calm down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it like spiked back up early last year. And I finally realized that I was pushing my body to its limits. Mm. And I truly wasn't. I, it's not that I wasn't happy. Yeah. It's just yeah. that I wasn't where I needed to be. And my body was finally pushing me to that decision because I was ignoring everything else. <laughs> and so I don't wish yeah. that on anyone, of yeah. course. But I think for me, I'm, I'm a super mm -hmm. stubborn person too. In me terms too. Of like, if I yeah. say I'm going to do something, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I think that that as well kind of made me stay in it for so long. And finally, my body was the one that had to say, no, <laughs> that's, this is it. This yeah. is it. Thank you so much for sharing that because somebody else who's listening to us right now or who's watching the replay or listening to the replay is probably experiencing that and thinking that there's something wrong with them. And it's not, you know, these are normal feelings that a lot of us go through. And I don't want you, if, you, if this is you, I don't want you to go through that and think that there's something wrong with you or start to doubt your decision on um, turning your side hustle or your passion into or your purpose into a business, you know, because it doesn't look like people are experiencing this on Instagram. I don't want you to think that. Think that. That's another reason why I created this platform so we can come on and have transparent conversations like this, right? Because I truly believe that there is power in our testimonies, yeah. right? Somebody can get motivation and inspiration from listening to us share our struggles and what it is that we're going through and it's you know so funny that you bring up how your body was trying to get your attention because yeah. last week yeah <laughs> yeah because last week i had a conversation you guys got to catch the replay i had a conversation with mia bradford and we talked about how to use self-awareness to get in tune with our bodies right because our vessels like we have to take care of our vessels in order to work that corporate job in order to start that business Right. And if you the person who wants to do both, you have to take care of your vessel. Yeah. And I just talked about how my body was like literally shutting. Well, not, I would say shutting down, but it was literally going through all these different transformations, trying to get me to realize and understand that there was something deeper that I needed to uh, pay attention to and focus on. And I just talked about how doing my research, because um, with me, it was digestive problems. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was I shared that during my research, I realized that <clears throat> digestive issues can lead to depression. That could be an underlying cause. So we have people out here who are depressed um, and, and thinking that it's something external, but it can literally be something internal. Because I, I shared how I was literally walking around as if it was a, a, a dark cloud wow. walking over me, wow. even though I had booked speaking engagements and had, you know, booked the council woman to be on the podcast. Like I had all these wonderful things going on. I would go and, and shoot an episode of Living Her Truth and then I'll go home and be on the couch because I'm just like, yeah. what is going on with me? And I thought that I was depressed. And so I, I kept back into therapy and, you know, I'm still going to do therapy and I'm a, a advocate for therapy, you know, but once I did the detox and 
clear, you know, my, my body of all the toxins and stuff. Yeah. It's like that dark, that dark cloud went away. Yeah. So it's so interesting that you brought up the fact that, you know, your body was like, hey, girl. Like, <laughs> I think you plenty noticed. You weren't paying attention, so now I'm going to make it hurt. <laughs> you are not paying attention. So uh, I encourage you guys to go back and listen to and listen to that that episode as as well so michelle even though that you prepare your transition to go from corporate to uh nonprofit, were you still scared the day that you said okay this is the day <laughs> i'm going to quit can you walk us through that so, day? i think it's funny because on my if, if any of y'all follow me on on instagram or my friends at the time they were following me on instagram i feel like i give people hints Mm. But like only people that were really that close, close, close to me, because I'm also like a very yeah. private person. Yeah. Probably only those people might have been like, what's going on? There's something going on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had talked, honestly, I think I wanted to, I think I wanted to do this like a year before I actually did it. Mm. And Why did I, it so I ended up having, I was like new into this, the second job. That okay. I had just transitioned into, and I think I, I, I talked myself into staying there a little longer because maybe I was just trying to get used to this new environment. Mm. And I had my husband, who's a great support system for me. We had a whole talk about it, and like he, he was, he was always there for me when I would come home. I would come home crying sometimes mm. because it was just so much pressure. Yeah. And so I, I pushed it back by many months, actually, because um, I kind of talked myself into it, thinking, like, you just need to be stronger and you just need to stick with it a little bit more and, and it'll get better. And I think it happened because my birthday was rolling in. And then I went through one of those at the time I was turning. How old was I turning? <laughs> it's been that long. <laughs> it was early. I was turning 29. Okay. And... I remember kind of thinking through the fact that I had already had this thought really mm -hmm. strongly in me for two years mm -hmm. and I was turning 29 <laughs> and I was a 29 <laughs> and uh, I was turning 28. <laughs> I was turning 28 and uh, I was thinking about how I was getting closer to being 30 and then thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm almost 30. Mm -hmm. And am I where I want to be in line with where I want to be when I'm 30 and beyond? Mm -hmm. And so finally, it, it was the Sunday before. My birthday was on that Monday. Mm -hmm. And I just went up to my husband and I said, I'm doing it tomorrow. Wow. And all he said was, okay. Wow. And then the next day I went in so freaking nervous uh -huh. super nervous and you know I got all dressed up I was like all nice and stuff happened to be the day that like I show up and everybody's like on a great mood like everybody's all <laughs> cheerful smiley <laughs> I was just like oh my gosh thanks for making it super hard on me. right right and I remember sitting at my desk and I was like okay I need to go I need to go mm -hmm. do this I need to do it like early versus mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. and okay I'm gonna go and I was literally sitting at my desk and I kept like holding on, like ripping to my chair. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go next. Uh, okay, no, hold on. okay, I'm gonna go. Like, uh, uh, no, not yet. Like, I literally was like bobbing up and down on uh -huh. my chair and thinking, like, okay, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna do it now. So then I like turn away because I could actually see like my boss's office mm -hmm. near me. Mm -hmm. So I turn away and I was like psyching myself and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm ready. And I stand up and she's not in her office. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so then um, and then ended up being that I get called in for a meeting. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'll do it during that meeting. So I'm like, okay, I guess the decision was made for me. I get this invite for this meeting, and it's like a few minutes after. And mm -hmm. we go in there, and we have our meeting. And then at the end of the meeting, I feel like she, my boss is wondering, like, why are you still lingering around the office? Because <laughs> I was just kind of sitting there, which I never did. Yeah, yeah. And then it was kind of like, is there anything else? And I went in, and I spilled the beans. <laughs> and um, I think there was a little bit of shock initially because mm -hmm. it was definitely unexpected. Um, the reasoning behind it mm -hmm. was a little mm -hmm. bit, like, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 
and the fact that I was not leaving for another job was also mm. like un, like they were like oh you're not leaving to a competitor like that was kind of like one of the priorities here it was like yeah. you're not leaving yeah. to a competitor yeah um but I think that I I totally admired my boss she was mm. one of the strongest women that I met in the industry and there were very few of us um which I didn't mention but when I started working, I was one of the first women that was hired in my that the previous my first company out of college. What was the industry? And L and G, like a financial okay. gas. So it's already okay. super niche, niche inside of the mm-hmm. energy industry. And then on top of that, there's even less women. Um, I was also one of the first Latinas in my previous companies, and it was beautiful to me to finally be able to have a female boss that had such a strong presence. So I also felt like. I had to do this right because I owed it to her as another female to give her plenty mm-hmm. notice to respect her and her time and and she like she hired me mm. and she hired me for a reason mm-hmm. and so when I finally went and I talked to her I actually yeah, I talked to her it was it was in April my birthday is in April mm-hmm. so future birthday gifts uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave I stayed until June okay I gave her a few months. So that we could replace the team, mm-hmm. so that we can leave everything in its place, so that any projects we were working on, we can close them out. Mm-hmm. Because you, you, your brand is still super important in this yeah. process, yeah. and you have to yeah. maintain that professionalism. Yes. And I think, to me, above everything else, that was one of the most important things: is maintaining that professionalism. And so I, yeah, I did that. And then I think it was a little bit weird, though, because then people were like, "You're leaving," and then you're still here. <laughs> And then you're still here the following yeah, month. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was interesting and exciting. And then I felt like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders afterwards because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I knew there was a day where I was going to be done. Yeah. And then I can go full force until the the other mm-hmm. opportunities. And technically, you was a year behind your schedule. Yes. Technically. Yeah. You know, kudos to your boss for not making it awkward and not putting any doubt in your mind because that conversation could have went completely wrong and had you on a completely different course. Uh, so shout out. You know, it takes a woman not just who's who's strong but confident in who she is to really praise, you know, someone who's actually living leaving the company to start their own company, you know? I mean, so kudos to her because I've been in corporate America and I've been in a situation where uh, in particular, I went up to a coworker who was a VP in a company, but she hadn't been in the company uh, at that point. You know, she wasn't with the company that long. And at that point, she was working on her undergraduate degree. Mm. So the fact that she was a VP, I was just like, oh, wow, let me go <laughs> and, you know, and, and ask her to be my mentor because if yeah. she can do it. And I went in the office and I told her, I'm just like, wow, I admired you. Oh my God, you're a VP already. You know, I would love for you to mentor me because, you know, I could probably do it half the time is you because you know i'm coming in <laughs> with a master's degree you know but i just asked her you know for her help and and you know and guidance or whatever and what did i do that for she gave me hell afterwards wow. for no apparent reason wow. and i attributed back to that conversation because before i had that conversation with you her and everything now I didn't, oh. want to, I didn't want to be competition, though. I felt like if they can make you VP, they can make me VP, too. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but the way God works, the way my God is set up, mm-hmm. she ended up getting promoted. And guess who took over her position? <laughs> that will be me. <laughs> <laughs> so these battles are not for you. You don't have to fight your battles. That's number one. I also want to address the fact, too, that you said that, you know, uh, you was analyzing your life when you turned 28 to see if you was on the path to being where you want to be by a certain age. Let me tell you something. From as as long as I can remember, I had my whole life planned out. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Let me tell you how God works another way. (laughs) Had my whole life planned out. If you guys know my story, you know that. I've always wanted to be the next Perry Mason. Everybody knows that. Perry Mason, I know I'm aging myself, but Perry Mason, TV show, he's an attorney, never lost a case, right? 
always wanted to be the next Perry Mason. And I was on track to do that. Y'all tag him in the comments right now so he could see this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on track for doing that because my whole reason for coming to Houston is to go to law school because I attended Thurgood Marshall School of Law. And like I had so many people riding on me and believing in me that I had a client list in the seventh grade. Like that's how much my, that's how much my family and community believed in the fact that, that I was going to be an attorney. So to go to law school, do a year and then tell my mom that that's not what I wanted to do anymore. Like I'm confused. <laughs> I don't really know what I want to do. So I'm going to take a break, you know, and then not go back. Like that was huge. And I was literally lost because that was the only plan mm. that I had for my life. And because plan A was no longer working and not because of circumstance, but because of the decision that I made. Now I started to question, you know, am I going to be at a certain place by the time I turn 30, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, would I get married and have kids by 35? Because I said that if I didn't have kids by 35, that it wasn't going to happen. I still don't, I'm, you know, I'm surpassed 35, I still don't have kids, <laughs> but it's still an option. You know, we have to have flexibility in our plan. It's okay to have a plan for your life. It's okay to have goals, but you have to have flexibility in your strategy because yeah. there is more than one route to get to your goals. I've used the analogy before, you know, to get to the grocery store from your house, to get to your local grocery store, how many ways can you get to the grocery store? Probably, you could probably think about three or four different ways, right? Same way with your goals. The end goal shouldn't change, but the way you get there may have to and we have to allow ourselves that flexibility because if our plan doesn't line up with god's plan guess what it's not going to happen in your timing so we need to have that flexibility and we need to give ourselves time and grace to learn what we need to learn right to get the experience that we need to to get to meet the people that we need to meet to mature and grow personally and professionally. So we, so when we get to that level, we're able to sustain and maintain to a certain point. Yeah. Because the higher you go, the more you achieve in your life, the bigger the problems. Yeah. The bigger the enemies, <laughs> the bigger the target is going to be on your back because the enemy doesn't want you to succeed, right? Sometimes we get so anxious. Um, to move to that next level that we're not even paying attention yeah. to what it is that we're supposed to learn and lessons that we're supposed to learn I, on our current I level. I love everything that you just said because mm -hmm. I felt like that's that's kind of what where I was in this whole process uh. is that from college to when I started working, mm -hmm. if any, my husband and I, we always had this goal or like life yeah. mission yeah. to to change the world, right? Oh, like yeah. We, our hashtag. Oh, yeah. Like pinky in the brain. Yeah, like. We always use the hashtag Cambia el Mundo, which has okay. changed the world in Spanish. Okay. And we were we we're all about like, what are we doing today to make somebody's life better? And then it's specifically mm -hmm. at the time, it's like we're, we're targeting students that look like us that went through situations like us. How can we help? Mm -hmm. And so right when you leave college, you're all excited and you're pumped up and you have all that energy about it. Oh, yeah. It could have been so easy for us to just said, I'm just going to go and do this now. Mm-hmm. If I had done that, though, mm -hmm. I would have missed out on so many lessons mm -hmm. that I learned by working in corporate America for five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leadership lessons, mm -hmm. things around teamwork. Mm -hmm. um, I, I worked with companies all around the world. I was the only female at the table so many times. I was mm -hmm. the only Latina at the table so many times. That type of experience mm -hmm. and what you get, what you learn from that, even separate from like the actual content that was being discussed, just that that people experience is something that is invaluable. And that now working at, at Impact Hub and helping social entrepreneurs develop their businesses and connecting with that global network of Impact Hub, that experience that I was able to gain for those five years in mm -hmm. corporate America mm -hmm. is going to be tremendous help. Mm -hmm combining it with that nonprofit volunteer experience to help social entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't, if I hadn't done that for those that yeah, many years, yeah. even though wanting, like I had been wanting to leave, mm -hmm. I've been wanting to leave. Well, every time that I stayed, a new lesson came in that was invaluable that I would have missed out on. And so I, it wasn't 
it was something that I could have easily just said, well, I'm going to go do this now. Mm -hmm. what, would, what would I have done? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. And even though I didn't have a plan really when mm -hmm. I decided to leave last year, I, what you were saying earlier too, I was reading back through my notes from church mm. for the previous year. Uh huh. And God had been telling me, mm. guiding me to mm. this decision for a year. Mm. I wanted it for many years. Yeah. But it wasn't until about a year before I made the decision mm -hmm. that he started speaking to me about it. And the only reason I know that is because I was finally decided to start writing things down mm -hmm. and I was going back through everything. And mm -hmm. I literally saw the trail that mm. if I hadn't been, we we're talking about self-awareness and yeah. how are you actually yeah. assessing. Yeah. To me, that, yeah. that piece, mm -hmm. prayer especially, mm -hmm. has been one of the most important pieces mm -hmm. in this journey. And, mm -hmm. and even in everything that happened after, mm -hmm. because I was, I was unemployed, like, for I'm not making any money for about a year. One year. I didn't expect that. Repeat that. Because y'all, <laughs> for the people in the background <laughs> who didn't hear that, say that again, that last line. I was not making any money for one year. Actually, it was 12 months exactly. Mm. I was not, I was not mentally prepared for that. And the only way, the only, yeah, the only way that I was able to go through that and for that long was because I kept going back, back to God. And through that process, like, God, you told me like this, I was following, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> like, this is not what I wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. But some God called me to do this mm -hmm. for a greater purpose. And it was that constant connection that helped me keep going. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that when the times that I wouldn't do that, and then I would kind of lose some mm -hmm. of that connection, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I would allow those feelings mm -hmm. of like negativity to come in. And that was even more, you're talking about self-awareness. God gave me all those tools that I needed to be able to identify when that was happening to me and immediately say, nope, this is not, not going to happen. But that only happened because I was like, I was in it intentionally. Mm -hmm. I was intentionally in it and trying to cover myself. And if that hadn't been the case, or if I would have just let it, let it go completely, y'all, I could have taken another corporate job, like the following month, the next two months, I've still to this day get job offers. Mm. And so that temptation is always there, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I'm here for a reason and I'm here yeah. on a mission for a reason. And yeah. that self-awareness is so important. Yep. Yep. Oh my goodness. That's exactly why I started a sister's truth. And that's exactly why I do self-awareness coaching, because I want you guys to understand that the answers on whatever it is that you need answers for changing a career whether or not you should leave should you go back to school should you be in a relationship with so-and-so you know all those answers are already in you it takes self-awareness and you know a part of my purpose is to share my self-awareness journey or how i transitioned from victim to survivor of sexual abuse and how god is using me using me as i am this hood chick from the projects right outside of Chicago, who was sexually abused, who mama wasn't educated, daddy wasn't educated, like, like all of these things, how he was able to use me and still, still using me to impact and motivate the masses, right? We need to start right where we are. And we also, oh my God, you said so many good things. We also need to you know, embrace the journey yeah. because you said that there's been plenty of times that you have been the only woman at the table, the only Latina at the table. How important was that? You guys, there are going to be people along our journey that we're going to impact and bless. And we not even, and we would never know that we have impacted and blessed them, but we're impacting and blessing them because we showed up. Do you know how many times Michelle sat at the table as the only woman and the only Latina and it changed somebody's thinking? Like she probably would never know that. How many times has she showed up and sat down at the table and somebody walked past the room that looked like her and stopped and went back and was like, is she the only Latina? Why, why is she? <laughs> is she the only one? You know, and it gave that person encouragement to be like, okay, so yeah, I can sit at the table. You guys, our journey is not just about us. It's about the people that we are here and that we are meant to serve. 
that's what our purpose is all about. So we have to embrace our journeys, uh, not be so impatient. Okay, let me talk to myself for a minute. <laughs> Not be so impatient because you might be most impatient, <laughs> impatient person, uh, you know, and and be where God has positioned us to be, right? It's so important that we take the journey. And before you decide to, you know, leap off onto that entrepreneurship journey, can you be an entrepreneur for a year and not get paid? Like, yes. The Lord is going to provide if you're, you know, in line with the purpose and the calling that he has on your life. But it takes action to do that. Like you got to put action behind your faith to do that. Are you willing to do that? Like, think about that for a second, you know, before you jump off and go into entrepreneurship. Are you willing to do that? Because it's not easy. It's not it's, it's not easy. Like my husband has to remind me all the time. He told me just the other day. I read an article about some company and it said that it took like 15 years before they turned a profit. I just want to tell you that. You know, because, <laughs> because you know, because he he's there with me. He knows my struggles, you know. And so he reminds me of little articles and stuff like that that he he reads to, you know, help me to to realize is that this is a part of the process. Yeah. You know, it's a part of the journey. It's okay. I'm here supporting you 100 percent I know we need to go through this, you know, before we get to the other side. Just know I have you back. You know, so if you're not willing to go through the fire for whatever it is that you're thinking about, you know, leaving your corporate job to do, then you may want to, you know, really think about it. But if it's something that you are willing to go through the fire, you know, instead of just quitting your nine to five, yeah. plan for it. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think that most things, uh, even I haven't talked too much about the not nonprofits that I did found afterwards, but you can start doing a lot of this while you're still while you're have working. your job. Like, yeah. and, and if it's anything, okay. that's really what will show you if you're willing to actually do it. Yep. Because if you're willing to come home after you've had your full day of work mm -hmm. and work on this passion project or mm -hmm. this business idea mm -hmm. till whatever hour in the morning and then do yeah. it again and again and again and again, mm -hmm. that's going to be your schedule as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So might as well practice while you're getting a good salary. <laughs> 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 exactly. Practice why you got practice why you got that um that stability. Okay. So thank you so much for thank sharing you. all that tonight. Thank you. you know? It's actually the first time I share that really with the masses. Aww. Only the closest. My closest yeah. friends have really been a part of this journey. Yeah. But it I don't know, I felt like it was really important. And I mean, if we met was for a reason, mm -hmm. and I just hope that everybody that tuned in today is, yeah. helps you. And if not you, maybe you know someone that yeah absolutely thank you so much for sharing that